on YouTube. Welcome back to Heathen Vape Reviews. Today I'm going to show you my new favorite sub ohm tank, and it is the Vengeance Tank from Council of Vapor, sent by VapeSocietySupply.com. Guys, this tank is it's better than the Crown, in my opinion, when it comes to vapor quality, vapor density, and flavor. Now, with that being said, there are some downfalls to it, okay? But I can overlook every one of those downfalls or cons or whatever you want to call it because of the quality of vapor that you get from this little guy. First of all, let's just take a look at it. It's sexy as hell, and you will see down below how sexy it is. It's such a small profile. It's just beautifully done. Now, if Council of Vapor makes some sexy shit, they really do. The Royal Hunter, the Royal Hunter Mini, I mean, uh, the Kindred Mod, they make some really sexy stuff, and... They didn't stop when it came to the Vengeance Tank. Now, the reason why this thing is such a good vapor quality and vapor density and flavor is because of how low it is. You look, you take this tip off, and you look in there, you're, you can see your coil. It's right there, and also the chimney is wide. It's a wide bore chimney. So you're getting max, flap, max flavor, max vapor density, and uh, you don't get any spit back because they do have a honeycomb feature inside their, uh, you know, just like they do the Royal Hunter, they have that honeycomb feature here, um, and, you, and your drip tip doesn't get hot because they have a nice, thick Delrin insulator in the top cap, so it protects the, uh, the uh, drip tip from getting hot. It is not a 510 drip tip, you have to use this drip tip. Also, I don't mind that because it's a nice drip tip. It's wide bore, it has a rubber gasket at the top, and that rubber gasket is there for a reason because you can pull it out and it gives you adjustable airflow, not adjust, non-adjustable airflow at the top with these tiny little holes. You'll see closer when we go down in the Rex mode. Now, I always ran against drip, drip tip airflow, right? Um, matter of fact, my one of my last posts I put up on Instagram is um, I ran against drip tip airflow. Here, I'll show it to you right now. All right, so that was one of my latest posts that I put up on Instagram uh, talking about these drip tip airflow. Now, with that being said, guys, they kind of did it right. Or, I don't mind it without this. I don't mind the drip tip airflow open. First of all, because it's such tiny little holes that you barely feel anything. The only thing that it does do is cool it just a tiny, tiny bit. They did it right. Um, it's, it, it's really not much of a difference with this in or without it in. It might mute the flavor just a little bit, but because it's so close to your coil, because your mouth is so close to that coil, it really doesn't matter. You're still getting um, an onslaught of uh, flavor in your mouth. The thing is awesome. I like the rubber gasket in there. You're not going to bump your teeth with a stainless steel drip tip. It feels fine. Um, uh, what are some downfalls? To well, another thing, it's wide open. The airflow is wide open. It has four giant adjustable airflow slots at the bottom, and the coil diameter is huge. It's just as big as the uh, Atlantis version 2. I don't like that wide open airflow in the Atlantis version 2. When it comes to this one, I do. It's just perfect. I wouldn't want it any more restricted. I wouldn't want it any more open. It's just a pure quality, flavorful, vapor density vape. It really is beautiful, and you have to try it to believe me. It comes with 2.2 ohm coils, right? And uh, I've been rocking it on a mech mod, which is my simple V2. Guys, I do not recommend running it on a hybrid mech mod. I kind of know how far my pins will stick out before I can throw it on a hybrid, and I'm doing it at my own risk, but I do not recommend you doing it because it is not adjustable at 510. I do think that for me, it does stick out um, far enough for me to run it on there. Um, I have tested it. I have tried it, and I, I kind of know where I'm at because I've been through a 1,000 tanks, but I don't recommend it. But that just looks sexy on there, the simple V2. Matter of fact, guys, what I've been doing it, in work, I, I've had this right on my holster, right on my belt, and I've, that's what I've been using in work. It's sitting right on my belt with this leather holster from Unique Vapor Innovations. It's from the uh, the MechRay, um, and they, I've been rocking this all week, and I love it. I absolutely love the flavor, love the vapor density, love the cloud production. Um, I love that you don't get any spit back. I love that uh, the that how easy it is to fill. Now. It's easy to fill, but it's not top fill. It is bottom fill, but it's just a couple of twists, and it's right off. There's nothing, uh, it's not real, it's 
just wide open. So it's just a couple of quick twists and you're done and you're good to go and you fill it. Another uh, con you can call is it only holds a couple of mils. Now the max mil, mil you're going to get in there and that's if you leave the coil in the bottom um, is about three mils. With the coil in the base, how you're supposed to fill it, you're only going to get two and a half to two and three quarter mils in there. So it's, you're not, you're going to be feeling this thing a lot. Now the con is that it runs through juice. It really, really runs through juice because um, it's such a good coil. It's a dual, it's a dual parallel vertical coil with wide open, uh, you know, wide open airflow. So um, the coils, I think they're going to be around fourteen, fifteen dollars at Vape Society Supply. They don't have them in yet, but I, it was confirmed to me that they will have them in this week. Guys, I've been running some number nine from Mojo E Juice in there, which is guys. This line is one of my favorite lines. It's delicious. Uh, EvateClouds.com. Check it out. Delicious. Uh, very well priced. So, but the reason I'm mentioning this is because I know this flavor. It's a fruity pebbles type flavor, and I know what it tastes like in a dripper. I know what it tastes like in other tanks, and it tastes the best in here. I'm I'm dead serious. Another good point about this thing is you take the drip tip off, right? Just take it off, remove it all together, and and just straight pipe it, right? You're getting a dripping experience without a doubt. It's just like you just drip some liquid in there and then you hit it. it took a one second hit, you saw the cloud production. The coil is right there. I mean, it's wide open, guys. I can't. I can't stress it enough how good of a job they did with keeping the chimney wide open, with keeping the coil as close to the drip tip as possible. And they're able to do that because they drop the threads on the coil. So which, instead of threading like this and stopping there, they have the threads down here so that the coil sticks even further up into the chimney and that much closer to your mouth. Guys, this thing is awesome. For $35, that's how much it is over at VapeSocietySupply.com, which seems to be about the going price. I see it for 40 on other sites. So it seems to be the going price for this uh, for this tank. comes with two coils. Uh, they are Canthal coils. 0.2 ohms. Now, I'm running on a mech, right? Fully charged batteries giving me about 75 to 80 watts. I've been running like that pretty much all week with this same exact coil. Haven't got a dry hit. Haven't got a burn hit. I've had it up to 100 watts. I threw it on a uh, regulated mod, popped it up to 100, vaped on that all day like that. No problems, no dry hits whatsoever. Uh, sweet spot for me seems to be about 70 watts. You can go as low as 60 watts, get a nice vapor production. Uh, kind of won't want to go any lower than that. You do still get a good vape, but it's not, not as good as you're going to get at about 70 watts. All right, guys? Um, really good thing. Guys, let me just stop talking about it. Let me go down up close in the Rex mode. Take a look at it. I'll be real quick. There's not a lot to it. I'll show you the packaging. As always, nice packaging from Cancel Vapor. And then we'll come back up. I'll give you my pros and cons, my final thoughts, and uh, then we'll get the hell out of here, right? So let's just go down into Rex mode. All right, guys, here we go with the Vengeance tank from Council of Vapor, okay? And as you see, it comes in this nice clamshell case. Council of Vapor, the logo, of course, Vengeance, councilofvapor.com, facebook.com, slash the Council of Vapor, okay? You pop this off. It does have a little sticker here, the Council Vapor logo, and it had one up top, and then also down at the bottom it says 0.2 ohm stainless steel. Now, I don't know what that means. I heard these are Canthal coils, but it does say stainless steel, so I don't know if they're going to offer that option. It's not checked, but neither is the 0.2. I, so I don't know. I'm not positive about that, guys. I don't know if these are stainless steel coils or Canthal. They, I've heard they were Canthal. I, I don't know. All right, so there you go. Inside, you're going to get your tank. Right here, okay, we'll take that out. And then you pop this whole thing out. In the top here, you wanna get a spare Pyrex glass. And I think there is some O-rings in there. Yes, there's some O-rings in there. And then you're gonna get your spare coil. Here it says, warning, please fill the tank, place it in for two minutes. Basically saturate your coil. All right, council vapor. Uh, QR code, if you want to go ahead and scan it, you can. Let me see, I'll try and zoom in on it. You can go ahead and scan that if you want. It'll probably bring you to their site. Visit us on Facebook. And then, Council of Vapor, Coil Hood, Kindred, Addy. Okay. All right, that's it. You get that, and then you're going to get this little manual here. Okay. 
Vengeance Quick Start Guide, CouncilofAper.com. Let's open her up. Picture of the tank. Unscrewed the Vengeance. There you go. You can read that. I don't have to read it to you. Pretty self-explanatory. And then it gives you nice pictures on the bottom. Adjustable airflow. Unscrew top cap and glass. Put, the, put it in and then fill it. All right. And as you can see, the coil does come wrapped. So you're not going to get any dirt in it or anything like that. We'll pop it out. Let's take a close look at this coil. As you can see, it says 0.2 ohms. Now it doesn't have the recommended wattage. I would say that 100 watts is your max wattage. I would really wouldn't want to bring it any further than that. I tried it a little further than that. Didn't get any dry hits or anything, but I think you're just going to push it too much and burn your cotton because, as you can see there, there's not a lot of cotton, and that bore is wide. It is a dual vertical. Let's see if we get closer. Closer. As you can see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six wicking holes, wide open wicking holes. You're going to have no problem wicking with this thing. I've been running a max VG juice through here with not one single wicking issue. Four wide open wicking holes down the bottom. You see the threading here? What that does is bring you closer to your, um, your coil goes in further to bring it closer to the drip tip, okay? And as you can see, the coil, it starts way back here. The coil starts here. Then you do have this O-ring which is going to seal it in, and here's your O-ring at the bottom. Okay, that is your coil. Now, it does look kind of like an Atlantis coil, but the Atlantis coil base will fit in, like the bottom will fit into your base, but it's the top, because the threading is up here, it will not go all the way in, all right? Just to let you know. But I'd rather use these coils anyway. And here she goes, guys, all right? Up close and personal, here is the the grommet, as you can see. Let's start from the top down. As you can see, you got this wide bore drip tip, 9 five ten. You do have this honeycomb feature for anti-spit back. You're going to have dual O-ring here. And then you're going to have, I think it's nine little air holes. One, two, three, four, five, uh, I lost count already. I think it's nine, seven or nine tiny, tiny little air holes. And right now the airflow is, is closed, so all you have to do is... Pop this little grommet off, and it's kind of like the TFV4 is, how it's a dual chamber, so that airflow goes in those little holes and comes out here, so it doesn't mingle with the flavor, right? Pretty neat the way they did it. I think they did it right. Um, I don't think, it, it's just really nice the way they did it. I don't mind it without the grommet in there. I don't think it makes much of a difference, except cooling your vapor just a little bit. All right, so that's your drip tip. And there you can see, look at your coils right there, right? Your coil is right there. Sorry the lighting isn't shining in there, but it's right there. That's how close your coil is. So you're, you're looking at your coil about right here. So that's the amount of room that it has to travel up before it hits your mouth. That's it. All right, there you have this real thick red Delrin insert, which is going to insulate your drip tip from getting hot. And it works. It works perfectly, guys. Now, I haven't found any other drip tips that fit in here, but I haven't tried them all. All right, then we work our way to the outside, and you're going to see the little signature uh, logo type thing that Council of Vapor uses, and that's all throughout this body here, as you can see, down the bottom and down the top. And on the inside, on the chamber, just say Vengeance. All right, and that is a wide chamber, much wider than most sub ohm tanks you're going to see out there. As we go further down, let me put the strip tip back in. As we go down, you're going to see one, two, three, four, wide open cyclonic airflow. Okay? And all you got to do to turn it is grab it and twist. And it'll close it all the way off. Or you can get it to almost mouth the lung like that. Just a tiny bit open. All right? And then it's going to stop you there, and then it'll stop you there. So it's not going to wander around on you in your pocket. That thing is firm in there, but it's kind of easy to turn. All right? And then as we get to the bottom, as you can see, look, guys, it doesn't, I would, cannot recommend you to use that, even though I've used it. Do as I say, don't do as I do, one of, one of those type of things. Um, I cannot recommend that you use this on a hybrid style top cap mech mod. 
right? And then you do have the Council Vapor logo at the bottom. Okay, then to fill it, you're just going to turn it upside down, grab here, and take it off. Put your dropper right in there and fill away. And there you can see that wide open chamber. See the honeycomb drip tip there? See if I can pull it out. Look how wide that is. All right. So that's that. That easy to fill. You don't want to fill in here. As you all may know, know may know. You want to fill in here. Okay. And then you have your base. All right. So just like any other sub ohm tank, grab your coil here. There is your base. All right. Coil hits that pin down the bottom. And that's it. The only one big negative I could say about this is it doesn't have an adjustable 510. All right. That and of course top fill. Okay, then you just grab it. And as you can see again, the threads, right? The threads are down here. And you see the threading in there? Right there, you see that? Alright, so that brings your coil closer to the tip. Turn it over, and you're good to go. There you go. Now, let's compare sizes. There's your Super Tank Mini. Now, as you can see, drip tip the base, they are the same exact size. Now, this is a little shorter without the drip tip. And this is top fill. This holds more liquid because the chamber is thicker. It reduces at the top. So, you know, they're about the same size, right? So, it is a mini, mini, uh, mini tank. All right, here it goes next to the TFV4. As you can see, way smaller, much smaller. Okay. And then one more, we'll bring in the crown tank. As you can see, it's much smaller than the crown tank. All right, guys, that is the Vengeance by Council of Vapor that I can honestly say is my new favorite sub-ohm tank. Let's go back up top in the Cody mode, give you my final thoughts, my pros and cons, and then we'll get out of here. Let's go up top. Guys, I'm loving this stripper. I'm loving this setup. I mean, I think it's a match made in heaven. It just looks beautiful on this little silver stainless steel um, mechanical mod, and it's just beautiful. Um, you can throw it on any any mod. It's going it's going to work. I wouldn't recommend it, like I said earlier, on a hybrid mech mod like I'm doing right now. I just don't recommend it because you saw the pos uh, the positive pin. It just it just has the potential. Even though it's sticking out far enough on mine right now, it has the potential to go in because it is an insulator that can shrink. You know what I mean? So can't recommend it. And it's going to be different on every tank, your 510 pin. So can't recommend that, guys, even though it does look pretty nice, right? Um, what else? All right, let me let me just say this. Let's, let's go through the pros, okay? And then we'll talk about the cons, okay? The pros are flavor. The best flavor tank I've ever had. Without a doubt, hands down, bar none, best flavor. Better than a Crown, better than a TFV4, whatever else you could think of. It's just the best flavor tank out there. Um, vapor production. Top notch. It's up there with the ground. It's up there with the TFV4. I would say the TFV4 may be a little more uh, vapor production. But because it's just natural, it's a bigger coil. You know what I mean? It holds a lot more juice. So that's the reason why. If this coil was as big as that, I think you would get more vapor production out of that, out of this. Um, vapor density. Vapor density, this is top notch. I, I would say up there with the best of them, with your crown, with your TFV4s. Um, the vapor density is there. there. There is no skimping out on the vapor density. Even when you take the, uh, the grommet off of the top and use the airflow at the drip tip, <clears throat> you're still getting that vapor density. It's not, it doesn't really thin it out like these other adjustable airflow drip tips. It's not wide open. You saw down close how tiny those little holes are. It just gives you that little, uh, what do they call it, the Venturi effect. Just a little to help you, help you get that pull and then it cools it down just slightly and it doesn't take too much away from the flavor, guys. So if you're rocking this at like 100, 120 watts or whatever it is, take that drip gr grommet off and it will cool it down a little bit. Another plus, drip tip doesn't get hot. It just doesn't. I haven't had this thing get hot whatsoever because it has that red Delrin insulator, which is very thick on the inside, and it really does the job. 
All right. Another uh, uh, feature that I really like is the honeycomb anti spit back. Um, now, is there is there a big difference when you when you pipe it like that without the honeycomb thing? There's a difference, definitely a difference, but it's not like a huge noticeable difference. All right. So, but you can if you want to pop it off, just pipe it like that, and you'll be fine, man. I've done it, and I don't even get much spit back with that. Um, let me try and take a big hit, see if how much uh, spit back I get without the drip tip. Minimal, minimal. So, I mean, maybe if you had, this is like a max VG juice, so maybe if you had like a 60-40, maybe even a 70-30, maybe you'll get a little more spit back, and that's why that honeycomb feature is there. And that's also one of their signature features for uh, Council of Vapor, that honeycomb drip tip, which I really like. I think that's done right, you know, as opposed to like a mesh screen or any, like a bar or whatever, any any other way they did it. I like the honeycomb feature. I really do. like the drip tip, like the rubber grommet. I like the small profile. Where is, uh, here goes the, uh, what's it called? The Super Tank Mini. From drip tip to base, it's the same exact size, all right? Now, this holds much more. It holds like four mils, right? This holds about two and a half, I'm going to say, three mils tops, right? Now, the reason for that is because of the barrel. The barrel is so much wider, and that's why I love this tank, but this is much more flavorful. Uh, it really is, and vapor production is better. So, it just, uh, it's great. What else? Let, me, let me think of another pro is the airflow. You do have adjustable airflow, right? You can adjust the fl airflow down and to as low as you want. And it almost becomes a mouth to lung because it is just those cyclonic slots that you can adjust over. You know what I mean? And it's nice and in place. Um, another feature that I like that I probably didn't think I would like is there's no knurling on it, but everything's easy. It comes apart easy. You can easily move the uh, airflow ring. It just adds to the sexiness of this device, the sleekness um, without having that knurling there. Uh, what else can I say? Um, the coils. I think the coils wick awesome that they're great um what i didn't talk about is the uh ceramic inside the coils some of you may not like that they're, they're it's not organic japanese cotton it's it's ceramic coils i mean it's a uh, little uh ceramic fibers i guess you could say that are that are in in there i think along with uh, organic japanese cotton but yeah it's ceramic coils so maybe that's why the coils are so good and the the way the why these coils perform so well, and I don't know why I'm getting tongue twisted right now, but that's something you got to take into consideration if you if you're willing to vape on ceramic fibers because that is basically what's in there. Now, I've seen them taken apart. I haven't done it myself, but I've seen the coil taken apart, and it's not like these little tiny fibers just go flying around. They're packed in there. Just you would, it looks just like cotton. You know what I mean? It's packed into a roll of cotton. So. It is what it is, guys. That's something that you got to judge. All right. Uh, let's go through some cons. Okay. Some cons. It's not top fill. You got to take it off. You got to fill from the bottom. All right. It's one con. Another con is that you're going to run through juice. This thing sucks up juice just like most of these sub ohm tanks. I think this is just a little higher than, than average. You're, you're going to, it goes through a little more juice than the average tank. Um, it doesn't have a 510 drip tip, but that's a subjective con because I think this drip tip is fine in there. And I don't, I'm glad that it doesn't have the 510 because then you would have to, you would have to reduce the chamber and you're, it's not, it won't be the same tank. So it's not a con to me. It may be a con to some of you guys. One big con I can say doesn't have an adjustable 510. I think all tanks should have an adjustable 510 now. I've seen it done on sub tanks. It's not impossible. It's easy to do. So I think they should do that. So Council of Vapor, if you're listening, you come out with a V2 of this, make adjustable 510 so you can absolutely running on a uh, hybrid uh, style top cap that's about all i can come up with the cons is the is the uh the amount of liquid that it holds it doesn't hold a lot but now even with that right it's if you wanted to put more liquid in there that means you're going to have to raise the height of the tank that means it's going to take away from the flavor it's going to take away from the vapor density and the uh, vapor production so or you're going to have to reduce the chamber which is going to do the same so it's just not going to be the same tank so they're there they're there for a reason, you know, it, it is what it is. So I, I really can't even call them cons. I think they did everything right. It looks good. It provides great, great flavor. It provides great vapor production. They made it as easy as it could be to fill with a bottom fill. 
Um, the one huge con, I think they could have the top though. I don't see why they couldn't just cut that top cap in half and make it two parts. That's the only real con is that it's not top though. Other than that, everything else is really like a subjective kind of thing or changing the tank kind of thing, you know? So, um, guys, yeah, I can highly recommend this for $35. 100%. This is hands down my favorite tank. I will be rocking this for a long time. You'll probably see it in plenty of my videos upcoming. Really love it, guys. Check it out. Try it for yourself, and I guarantee you will agree with me. I I don't. I haven't seen anybody that doesn't like this. Now, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. That's what I got for you today. I'm sorry I'm a bit all over the place. Um, I'm drinking coffee. I've just woke up. I slept all day because I've been at work the last four days, kind of not sleeping. So I slept all day today. Guys, I had a great vape mail week and I haven't been able to play with a lot of the stuff. I'm bringing some of the stuff in the work, testing it out. Got a lot of cool tanks. Got a badass RDA. Got a couple of these. The I, it's called the um, Fishbone Plus Velocity Style Deck, Inner Glass Chamber. This thing is amazing. This is amazing. I will be re probably reviewing this next. This might be my next video. This thing is awesome. Look at it here real quick. Oh, flavor is so good on this. So good. One of my favorite RDAs, hands down. Uh... iCloud Sig. They did a great job on this thing, guys. Um, I got the soda tank from CeraVape. This this nice, beautiful-looking tank with a ceramic coil. It's really beautiful-looking tank. I got the Super Tank Mini, or no, the Super Tank RTA here. We'll be looking at that. Still testing that out. I got this guy, guys. What do you see this? Look at that. Look at that. From TOL Vaping Technologies, dual 18650, parallel MOSFET protected. Handcrafted in the USA with a buck eyebrow face and uh, what type of wood is this? Chestnut, I believe. Chestnut wood, buck eyebrow. Oh, beautiful. Fat Daddy 510, Fat Daddy Fire Button. It's just, it's a, it's a beautiful box, guys. Really, really good. And it hits like a monster truck. <sighs> Poker Face RDA on there. Damn, and I got some Adore E liquids. That's another thing. You see the full line of Adore E liquids back here? I was telling Dawn, who owns the company, that I thought she made an anti-heathen prof uh, flavor profile because everything in there was like apple, not a big apple vapor, peach, I'm not a big peach vapor, custard, I can't stand custards, coconut, I nah, don't like coconut. Then she's like, just try it. So I tried it, and every one of them is delicious. Every one of them, eat in my words, that sinful apple roll is... God, it's so good. So good, guys. You got to try it out. And it's like $12 for a 30 mil, so... You got to try it out. Check out uh, AdoreEliquids.com. Um, what else? I got a couple other things. Uh, I forget. Oh, the X-Tank thing that... Uh, I, uh, I forget what it's called. KS Tank from Tobacco. It's a it's a clone of the original. Um, it's like a mouth to lung tank. I'm going to try and uh, mod it out. Or I'll set it to Addy Tooney. Have him mod it out for me. See what he can do with it. Um, I do have the videos coming. I will pull the uh, winners of the... Uh, the Bumblebee there, the uh, Vape Connect 150 watt, and as well as the this guy here, what's he called? Uh, S Ball Tank. Man, I get so many products, I, I forget their names. It's crazy. Um, what else did I get? Damn, I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting. I, oh, I got uh, Vapor's Choice finally came in. They sent me a big uh, package, Vapor's Choice cotton. So I'm finally able to do the wicking comparison video. I think I got like eight different wicks. Um, actually, I have Vapor's Choice Cotton in one side here, and I have Native Wicks in the other side, and I'm trying to, you know, compare it that way to see how, you know, comparison between the two. I got Rasta Vapor's new line in. Uh, I'll be, I'll be testing that line out. Got a lot of things coming, and also, I'm waiting for the uh, DHL Fair. He should be here any minute. He's supposed to be coming today and uh, bringing some good things. I got the uh, Clapper Mini 50-watt, Clapper Mini Plus. It's called the 50-watt temperature control box mod. Uh, lots of things, guys. I can't think off the top of my head, but there's I got a bunch of shit in this week and a bunch of shit coming this week ahead. So stay tuned, guys. I got four days off. I'll be kicking out some reviews. Um <laughs> Look, I, I didn't even come home, take a shower, shave, get a hair, cut my hair or anything like that. But like I tell my daughter, you get what you get, you don't get upset, all right? So this is me in the flesh, 
non-showered, uh, just a little hyper about certain products and wanted to bring it to you guys. So thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. Stay tuned. I got plenty of good things coming. Uh, yeah, that's it, guys. All right, so let me take a hit off of this Vengeance Tank, my brand new favorite sub -ohm tank from Council of Vapor sitting on my Simple V2, and then we're going to get out of here. Let's launch it.